And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands, and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. The spiritual wickedness in high places made sure to close the spiritual eyes and ears of the people to disconnect them from their creator. The kingdom of darkness managed to achieve this through various ways, politics, government, entertainment, the educational system, agriculture, history, and religion. These various divisions in the beast system assisted the workers of iniquity in closing your spiritual eyes. The beast system is Satan's kingdom in this world. The spiritual wickedness in high places does the will of the Satans that are behind the scenes. I know many of you are trained to view people as the threat and the root to your problems. However, the scriptures let us know that we do not war with flesh. Flesh and blood is not the root cause to the various attacks against us in the beast culture. We are dealing with principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites and the indigenous black people, it's important for you to know the identity of your true enemies. I know we're used to seeing the other species of mankind and all of its various subgroups attack us in the beast system. Because we see their face and not the unclean spirits and fallen angels, we automatically make them the root cause to our persecution. The other species of mankind have a role to play in the attacks against the indigenous black people. However, the other species of mankind is not the root. Have you heard the saying, follow the money? When you follow the money, it usually leads you back to one giant corporation that housed the various corporations and organizations in this world. Some of you believe there's multiple corporations in this world. The truth is these corporations or businesses are within other corporations that is under the umbrella of one big entity. For example, many of the various news networks appear to be run by different corporations and organizations. However, if you do your research, you will find out that all of these mainstream media networks are owned by one giant corporation. Likewise, if you pay attention to the other species of mankind and observe their beliefs and behaviors, you will see that their way of life leads to the kingdom of darkness and not to the God of Israel. Satan said in the scriptures to the Messiah, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world if you would bow down and worship me. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The Messiah declined Satan's offer. When the word of God became flesh, he was rejected and killed. The Messiah is not ruling in all the kingdoms of this world, nor does his people that truly follow him rule in the nations. The Messiah himself said his kingdom is not of this world. If his kingdom was of this world, his people would have fought to preserve his life. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight 
that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. The Messiah and his servants are not running this present world. The scriptures inform us that Satan is the God of this world. We all should know by now that Satan wants to be like the Most High. He wants to be worshipped like the Most High. The same offer he made to the Messiah when he was flesh, Satan made to the two species of mankind that live in this world. Today, the other species of mankind rule this world. It's safe to say they have accepted Satan's offer of bowing down to worship him in exchange for all the kingdoms of this world. If you follow the behaviors and beliefs of the other species of mankind, it will lead you to the kingdom of darkness. The scriptures warn us in the book of Corinthians that the Gentiles make their sacrifices to devils and not to the most high. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Any Israelite or Gentile that believe the leaders of this world serve the most high, the God of this world have blind your eyes. You're in denial. There's no evidence of the leaders of this world serving the God of Israel. Their behaviors and beliefs are anti the most high. If you follow the other species of mankind, you will see they lead you to Satan and not to the most high. The scriptures is correct when it say the earth is in the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The earth wouldn't be in the hands of the wicked if the people truly serve the God of Israel. The Most High said he will build his church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Today in the beast system, the laws of the Most High are obsolete. The people are corrupt. They have no spiritual connection to the Most High. Majority of the people in this world follow the leadership of the other species of mankind. The other species of mankind led them to Satan. That is why the people are not shameful of the things they do. They will publicize their shame for the world to see. The scripture said, by their behaviors, you will know a person. If you observe and study the other species of mankind and all of its subgroups, they will lead you to the root cause to the spiritual attacks. If you only focus on flesh, you'll never get to the root. By their fruits, you will know them. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Israelites, in spiritual warfare, you have to know the identity of your enemies and you must know the root cause to the attacks you're experiencing. You can't be financially stressed and believe if you work extra hours or get another job, it will fix your financial problems. That is fighting back in the flesh. The synagogue of Satan didn't train the people to see what lies behind the scenes. Therefore, the people reason in the flesh for everything that happens to them. If the disciples of Satan truly was teaching the truth of the Most High's words, the people would be sanctified and trained to see the root cause to their problems. The root always leads back to spirit. If you're financially stressed, getting another job won't fix the issue. You have to defeat the spirit of poverty to get control over your finances. The spirit of poverty have disconnected you from your life source, which is the Most High. That is why your needs are not being met. The Most High said to us in the scriptures, don't worry about what you're going to wear and what to eat because the Most High know you're in need of these things. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The scripture reassured us that the Most High is aware that we need these things. The scriptures told us not to worry like the Gentiles concerning themselves with these matters. Getting another job to relieve you of the financial burden is not going to resolve the issue. Working three jobs and overtime is fighting back in the flesh. The scriptures gave us instructions on what to do. The words of the Most High said, First, Seek the kingdom of the Most High, 
and all of these things will be provided for you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Israelites, all you have to do is seek the kingdom and all these things will be provided unto you. The Most High's request is not as difficult as some of you may believe. What the Most High is asking of us is not extreme. However, if you already under demonic oppression and unclean spirits have a stronghold on your life, you need to seek deliverance. Working overtime to make end meet is not seeking the face of the Most High. Getting another job is not seeking the face of the Most High. Seeking the Most High is spending time in His presence, praying, fasting, and praising. Some of you may say, I am seeking the Most High and I'm still struggling. For a while, the synagogue of Satan deceive us into seeking their idols. Those of us with religious roots never served the Most High in the heathen's religion. We were serving their idols, which put us in rebellion against our God. The sin of idolatry would separate us from our God quickly. When you're separated from the Most High, the Father will not provide for you. The Most High will tell you to seek the gods you have chosen to provide for you. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. What some of you don't realize is that when you serve other gods, they become your providers. The other gods are responsible for your well-being. Those idols become king over you. Once you choose the idols of the heathens, you eliminate the Most High as your king and life source. The Most High can't provide for you because you no longer belong to him. The disciples of Satan led many into idolatry. That is why the people are not seeing the hands of the Most High in their life. In order to see the Most High's provision, you must return to him. The awakening is about the people of the Most High returning back to him. Israelites, it's a reason the Most High is asking his people to return to him in every generation. If you were serving him in religion, the Most High would have never asked us to return to him. That is why the hour have come and now is when the true worshipers will serve the Father in spirit and in truth. The Most High is pleading with his people to return to him. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. When you return to the Father, the Father will return to you. I'm one of the few that have been telling the people of the Most High to return to the Father, while many promote Messiah worship. You heard this scripture, the true worshipers must serve and worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Some of you are just now returning to serve the Father, despite being in the awakening for many years. Although you left the church, you continue to serve the idols of the heathens in the awakening. Many teachers continue to teach the doctrines of devils from religion, which further separated you from the Most High. That is why the Most High had to send the truth into the world through the gospel of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. We're the end time generation and the prophecies are being fulfilled. Israelites, Times are getting hard, and as the years go by, it will become even harder. There are a lot of end-time prophecies set for the end-time generation, and majority of these prophecies are revealing great tribulations ahead. That is why it's important for you to know how to fight back properly. Most of you are skilled fighters of the flesh. You know how to fight back in the flesh. The synagogue of Satan taught many of you how to fight flesh. Because you're not trained to fight in the spirit, that is why majority of you are defeated in certain areas of your life. The scripture said, although we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but by the pulling down of strongholds. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? 
In the indigenous black communities across the world, one of the major strongholds we face is division. The scriptures let us know a kingdom or household that is divided cannot stand. The indigenous black people are destroyed everywhere they live in this world. They are subject to the other species of mankind. The synagogue of Satan have a stronghold on the indigenous black people that prevent them from uniting. The scripture said in the book of Corinthians, although we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. What does this mean? Israelites, just because we live on this earth in the flesh body that was made to accommodate us on this earth, we don't war after the flesh, meaning we don't fight in the flesh. We are spirit beings. We are to walk in the spirit, just like the scripture said. Walking in the spirit would destroy the less of the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking in the spirit will pull down the strongholds. The scripture said our warfare is not carnal, but by the pulling down of strongholds. We are to target the strongholds in our lives in spiritual warfare to find deliverance. The scriptures don't instruct us to boycott, protest, and complain on social media. This is the kind of warfare the indigenous black people rely on to bring change. When the same tired strategy of boycotting, protesting, canceling, and complaining failed them, the indigenous black people say to the other species of mankind, leave us alone. We will focus on ourselves. You should have been focusing on yourselves and you should have seek the face of your God to bring the change you want. The Most High said, if you seek me, you will find me if you look for me with all of your heart. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. The scripture in the book of Jeremiah correspond with the scripture you heard in the book of Matthew that said, Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added on to you. Everything goes back to the people of the Most High seeking his face. The scriptures didn't tell us to seek anyone but the Most High, the Father. Also, the scriptures didn't say being a believer will pull down strongholds. You must seek the face of the Most High, the Father. Israelites, you can't use religion to seek the face of the Most High. Religion is witchcraft and idolatry. You will find yourself serving the God of this world if you follow the religious path. Remember, the road that leads to destruction has a multitude taking that road. Religion have a multitude following its doctrine to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Don't be a part of the multitude that have taken the broad road to destruction. I know religion have taught many of you to believe that you are winning and you overcame the kingdom of darkness. If you overcame the kingdom of darkness, the Satans wouldn't have a stronghold on your life. Don't let the disciples of Satan gaslight you into thinking believing in Jesus will cause the devil to flee. If you want to pull down strongholds, you will need to engage in spiritual warfare. If the kingdom of darkness have a stronghold in your life, you was defeated in a certain area of your life. Israelites, to pull down strongholds, you have to shift your focus from the flesh to the behind the scenes enemies. You must fight in the spirit. Israelites, what you have been fighting in the flesh for multiple years are the results of what took place in the spirit. When the covenant begins to manifest in the flesh, all you can do is brace yourself and seek deliverance. The kingdom of darkness already got access to your life. You can no longer prevent the covenant from manifesting. That is why it's important to get to the root to eliminate the problem from manifesting in the physical realm. Most of the issues majority of you are facing is that the hidden covenants established in the B system and in the spirit realm are manifesting in your life. I wanted to address something that is very important. By now, you should know that some devils will only flee through prayer and fasting. 
albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. I talk a lot about the importance of rebuking evil dreams and covenants that was established in the spirit realm the moment you wake up. Most of you, when you wake up, you rebuke the dream. Listen to me carefully. In order to prevent some covenants from manifesting once the covenant was established in the dream, you also have to fast. Remember, some devils can only come out through prayer and fasting. When a person have a stronghold on their life, you're not dealing with a little devil. In order for the spirit of division to have a stronghold over the indigenous black people, the people gave the spirit of division access to their life for multiple years, creating a stronghold. Strongholds typically are like addiction. Instead of you controlling the situation, the situation is controlling you. Think of a drug addict or someone with some sort of addiction. They have lost total control over that area in their life. At times, you will see a person with a drug addiction selling anything to get access to the drug of their choice. When a person become an addict, they no longer have control. If the kingdom of darkness have a stronghold over certain areas of your life, they are controlling you. The man in the tomb is a prime example of the kingdom of darkness having a stronghold over his life to the point where he lived in the tombs and was cutting himself. He was subject to the devils occupying him. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. If the Messiah didn't rebuke the legion of unclean spirits that made him their home, the legions of devils would continue to control his life and make him do things that are not convenient. If the kingdom of darkness have a stronghold over your life, deliverance is required through spiritual warfare. If a marine spirit was successful in establishing a covenant in the spirit realm, rebuking the dream and canceling the covenant when you wake up is not enough. Fasting is required. If you have serious dreams of a witchcraft attack of untimely death, rebuking the dream and canceling the covenant is not enough. An immediate fast is required. It's very important for you to know this. I don't want you to become comfortable with just rebuking the dream and canceling the covenant. The time have come for you to be doers of the word and not hearers only. You have to do your part in your deliverance. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Some of you are under heavy demonic oppression. Rebuking and canceling the dream is not enough. You have to go to war through spiritual warfare. Eating in the dream is one of those attacks that require immediate fasting if you didn't vomit the food in the spirit realm. Eating in the dream could symbolize the spirit of infirmity and a witchcraft attack of untimely death. Sex in the dream is one of those dreams that require fasting immediately. I know some of you enjoy those types of dreams. Those dreams are very demonic. Sex in the dream is one of the reasons some of you are having trouble being in a relationship. Your spirit spouse is causing conflict in your relationships, which lead to your marriage failing, adultery, perversion, homosexuality, and anti-marriage. I hope some of you are now beginning to see how important spiritual warfare is. Another example of the kingdom of darkness having a stronghold over the indigenous black people Jesus, the Messiah that came in his own name, have a stronghold over the Israelites and Gentiles all over the world. The only way to be delivered from this stronghold, the Most High, the Father, have to lead you to his only begotten Son. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Most of you was led to the other Messiah that came in his own name in religion. A worker of iniquity led you to him. Jesus seems to only bless the people that look like him, while the indigenous black people who are the most dedicated to Jesus are oppressed in the beast system. 
Despite of his promise to take your sins away, the Israelites are being judged for their iniquities and the iniquities of their fathers. The awakening is happening for the Most High to lead you to the word of God that came in his name. When you're dealing with a stronghold, you're dealing with a high level devil or power. Those kind only come out and defeated through prayer and fasting. Israelites and Gentiles, the very first step you must take in seeking the most high is repent. Israelites, sin will separate you from the most high. Sin will block your prayers. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Yes, sin will separate you from the most high. Israelites and Gentiles, it's very dangerous to engage in spiritual warfare while you're in sin. The reason it's dangerous, you don't have the help of the Most High. Therefore, the unclean spirits have the ability to attack you. There's a story in the scriptures where the seven sons of Skeva tried to rebuke an evil spirit out of a man. The evil spirit that was in the man said boldly that he knows the Messiah and he knows Paul. The evil spirit said to the sons of Skeva, who are you? The unclean spirit realized they didn't have the help of the kingdom of the most high. These men are described to be vagabonds. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. As you heard, these men weren't truly following the kingdom of the Most High. That is why the scriptures refer to them as vagabond. Because these men take it upon themselves to rebuke evil spirits without the help of the Most High, the evil spirit that was on the men jump on them and destroyed them. And there were seven sons of one Skeva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Did you hear the scriptures? The evil spirit overcame them and chased them out of town. Israelites, I want you to know how serious spiritual warfare is. I want you to engage in spiritual warfare the right way. If you do as you please in spiritual warfare, you won't be pulling down strongholds. The kingdom of darkness will put a stronger hold on your life. Israelites and Gentiles, it's very important that you repent of known and unknown sins. Cast down the wicked imaginations that come into your mind. Pray and ask the Most High to cleanse you from any known and unknown sins. You don't want to engage in spiritual warfare and sin is found in you. You won't get the success you're looking for if sin is found in you. When you repent, mean it. Turn from the sins that is causing you to transgress the laws of the Most High. Sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Israelites and Gentiles, you want the evil spirits to be afraid when they see you're about to engage in spiritual warfare. You want unclean spirits to run from you. You shouldn't be the one running from them. Make sure the Most High is with you in everything that you do. If your heart is perfect, the Most High is closer than you know. Israelites, don't ever let it come to the point where the unclean spirits is saying to you, who are you? If the devil can mock you in that way, you're far from the Most High. You must establish a relationship with the Most High. Today, the other species of mankind conspired against us to the point where we have forgotten our God. Because we have forgotten our God, the heathens are able to rule over us. Some heathens are not afraid to say, where's your God? They know they have successfully separated some of you from your God. The Messiah that came in his own name, many of you accepted to be the word of God and the most high, have caused a separation between you and your God. Because the other species of mankind know you don't have the help of the most high, some are not afraid to ask you, where's your God? Like the evil spirit did with the sons of Skeva. 
Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? The spiritual wickedness in high places know that they have successfully separated a great majority of people from the Most High. That is why they don't fear the Most High. They are not afraid to tell you what they're going to do. Now that the awakening is here, the Most High is pouring out his spirit on his people to prophesy and dream dreams. The Most High is showing his people how to counter the spiritual attacks. You have to listen to the command of the Most High to overcome your enemies. When you lack knowledge on how the heathens attack you in the spirit realm, you were defeated and you couldn't explain how. Now that the Most High is increasing your knowledge, take advantage of the wisdom. The end times prophecies that are pending require spiritual warfare to overcome. When the men of sin come, the Antichrist, he will wage war with everyone. The second beast will force many to worship the first beast. If you're alive at that time, you will have to counter these attacks so your knees won't bow down to serve the God of this world. Unfortunately, the people whose names is not written in the Lamb's book of life will bow down. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When you frequently engage in spiritual warfare, you will be able to stand against your enemies. You will stand firm so that your knees won't bow down to devils. As the end time generation, many trials and tribulations is prophesied to take place. We cannot destabilize the wicked dark powers of this world fighting in the flesh. It's time to shift your focus to spirit. We have been fighting in the flesh for multiple generations. Nothing have changed for us. The time have come for us to give the Most High the opportunity to lead us. Seeking the face of the Most High should be a part of our daily routine. Israelites, you should prioritize the Most High in your life. The Most High is your life source. Without him, the heathens can disrespect us and rule over us at their leisure. When we have the help of the Most High, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Examine yourself to see if there's any offense. Follow after King David and say to the Most High, create in me a clean heart. Ask the Most High to search you to find any offense and lead you on the path to everlasting life. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. During the most wonderful time of the year, the heathens are looking to renew the covenants as well as establish new covenants to maintain the strongholds they have over your life. They are making sacrifices to their idols and doing the rituals. The pagans are dedicated to their idols. Israelites and Gentiles, you must devote yourself to the Most High to be able to pull down the strongholds. Israelites, I hope you can now understand how important it is for you to repent. True repentance is required to get the result that you want in deliverance. You can't say I repent and continue to participate in the iniquity that gave the kingdom of darkness access to your life. The synagogue of Satan can no longer deceive us through religion. The Most High is tearing down every religious stronghold. Sanctify yourself with the truth. To prepare yourself for the days ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, the time have come for you to take your spiritual journey seriously. The past few messages about the most wonderful time of the year have shown you how the kingdom of darkness is attacking you in ways many of you didn't perceive. The beast system is set up to destroy you. That is why it's important for you to know how to seek your God to know how to pull down the strongholds in spiritual warfare. We live on a battlefield. You can't afford to let your guard down. You must be vigilant at all times, especially as the end time generation. Waiting for the arrival of the first beast. Protesting is not going to destroy the first beast. The beast was given power and authority to war with you. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Fighting in the flesh is not going to help you, but give the Satans through the spiritual wickedness in high places the access they need to overcome you. The Most High is teaching his people how to stand firm. Return to the Most High so that he can return to you. Cast out all the idols of the heathens and repent of your sins. You must have a sound mind and pure heart to gain access to the army of the Most High in spiritual warfare. Each and every single one of us who truly serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth should have the armor of the Most High on at all times. If you seek the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you will begin to see your enemies fall in the spirit realm and it will manifest in the physical realm. Israelites, trust in the Most High to lead you. Allow the Most High to order your steps. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble.